SBC Media. Welcome to iGaming Daily, analyzing the news from the betting and gaming industry all over the globe. Supported by SBC Summit Barcelona, the industry leading conference bringing you the future of sports betting and iGaming. Domestic football is now back on our TV screens, and as always, this has been accompanied by commercial potential and business developments that have likely flown under the radar for some. However, this is of course of massive interest to us at SBC, and the recent news that the Serie A betting data rights to the 2024-25 to season will be going to tender particularly caught our attention. It is not yet clear who will be bidding for the rights, but we can assume that current holders' stats perform will be keen to retain the Serie A as part of its impressive international portfolio. But in a sport where fortunes change at the drop of a hat, how significant are the Serie A data rights in comparison to other leagues? I'm Ted Orm Clay, one of SBC's senior journalists, and today on the latest episode of iGaming Daily, sponsored by SBC Summit Barcelona, I'm joined by SBC Sponsorship Director George Harborn and Insider Sport Editor Joe Streeter to hear their views on these developments. Uh, good to have you both here, guys. Uh, I'm quite pleased to have three Midlands accents on the show uh, for, I think, the first time. So, um, George, how are things with you? Yeah, all good, thanks. Makes a nice change, doesn't it? Some Midlands accents. Yeah, I'm good, though. Thank you. Chat, thanks for having me on as well. No problem. And Joe, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, Ted. Uh, yeah, good Good to have uh, some top flight football back this weekend. And uh, yeah, so some, in- some interesting games. And yeah, Old Trafford tonight as well for, for the big one. So yeah, I'm excited. Mate. And a win for Birmingham City as well. Joe, I know you like to try and get the boot in on me sometimes about Birmingham, <laughs> but we had, a, we had a win at the weekend. So we'll talk, we'll talk about that, please. I'll root for anyone against Leeds, to be honest. I'll root for anyone against Leeds. So, yeah, a, a great result. The first of the the Tom Brady era as well. And um, I'm going to just gloss over Nottingham Forest result the weekend because we don't need to, that doesn't need to be mentioned today. Well, none of us did until you raised it. But now that, now that it's raised, let's go into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah, set myself up as a walking target there, didn't I? Um, you did. <laughs> but... On the, on the topic of football, we'll take it away from England for now um, and talk about the Syria. So just to start this conversation off, for a lot of people, Syria can often be overshadowed by other European leagues, particularly as we just talked about the Premier League, as well as some of the ones like La Liga. Why should sports tech and data firms really value these rights that are going to tender? Um, I'll start with you, George. Yeah, well, look, I think first of all, Syria is still, you know, one of the biggest leagues in the world. I think... When, well, actually, UEFA recently announced their kind of new league rankings, which was, you know, some shocks in there. You know, the French league and dropped outside the top five for the first time. Um, I think it dropped down to seventh and then was replaced by the Eredivisie of, of the Netherlands in fifth and then uh, the Belgian Pro League as well in sixth. But Serie A ranked second in those league rankings. Um so I don't think it's as it's maybe as weak as we probably would traditionally think it. I think the other thing with with the league is it's an exciting league in the sense that in the last four years we've had four different champions. Obviously, we had Napoli last year, Milan before that, Inter, and and then Juve. Runners up have been different as well. Lazio and and um, Atalanta have both featured there. So, in terms of why would the rights be valuable, and you know why should people value the rights? Their rights belong into a genuinely exciting league. You know, last year again, three Italian teams in uh, in European finals with Inter in the Champions League final, Roma in the Europa League final, and and Fiorentina in the uh, in the Conference final. Now, admittedly, they were all unfortunate. None of them, none of them won, but they lost against Premier League opposition. You know, known to be the richest league in the world, and and all the rest of it, and you know, with the buying power that the Premier League has, so. Look, I think that any firm kind of worth its salt would absolutely be valuing these Serie A rights because Serie A, for me at the moment, on the pitch as a product for people to engage with, for people to want to bet on, is probably the strongest it's been since the kind of 90s heyday. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly with George there. I you know, completely echo that sentiment. Um, uh, the narratives behind Serie A are incredibly gripping. We saw last season... Uh, Napoli's uh, historic title win and Juventus' downfall. Jose Mourinho is there as well, also drew a lot of eyes to the league. Also, last season was a bit of an anomaly because Napoli sort of stormed ahead and won the league by 
15, 20 points, whereas normally in Serie A, because of the tightness, because it's obviously a lucrative league, but the money isn't quite there in, in the levels that it is with the Premier League. It's normally quite a close title race. And that when you get to the back end of the season, those narratives are really what draw engagement. It's also worth noting um, the, co- the kickoff times and content through the clock is key. I think we've seen that with the uh, MLS and the NBA, you know, because obviously that's a whole different uh, kettle of fish because it's through the night. But that content is key because it's at times when uh, otherwise there's not a lot of sport on and there's not a lot, a lot of top level sport on. Whereas with Serie A, there's um, occasionally there's midweek games at 530 there's a very early game on a Sunday morning. There's a packed fixture list on a Sunday. So it, I think it really can be a goldmine of engagement at times when other it's not competing with directly anyway with Premier League games. Yeah, Joe, I, I agree with what you said on Napoli. I mean, even though that they were leading the league from such a from so early on with such a big points difference, I think the narrative again that existed there with, you know, not having won the title for so long, even though even though the league felt like a foregone conclusion you were still invested in it, which is, you know, kind of a rare thing to to experience, really. Yeah, it was interesting, right? And you were just waiting for that moment to, for them to win the league. You were, were waiting to see if uh, Osimhen would come back. And even looking at the uh, looking at the the squads this season a little bit, it's quite even. It's There's not a standout candidate. There's not a Man City in there or a Real Madrid-Barcelona in there. It's quite an even league. It's anyone's for the taking. And yeah, credit to the Atlantas and the Lazios of this world because... They make it competitive even further down the league. Last season, Juventus finished seventh. They're in the Conference League this year. That's that's crazy. That's a, a, a real spectacle. But yeah, speaking of competitiveness, uh, Ted, who are some of the competitors in terms of who could take these rights? Yeah, I mean, first before I answer this, I both agree wholeheartedly with you about how yeah, Syria is at the sort of top of its engagement. It's not been for for a while. Um, but yeah, on the on the topic of this sort of tender. Obviously, stats from the current holder. There, as I said in the intro, they're going to want to hang on to that. Um, they've just renewed their deal with the UK's Football Data Co. this week, so they've got a very impressive portfolio. But the two biggest sort of contenders that first come to mind would obviously be Genius Sports and Sport Radar. They've also both got really extensive portfolios of um, sport, you know, sports league and sports association partners, and have both just reported strong revenue growth in interim trading reports. So it just it just stands to reason that they'd want to keep on expanding, keep finding growth there. But there's other names in there. We've got IMG Arena, who they have the MLS and Norwegian football data rights, I think. So they're probably going to want to, um, that we could maybe expect them to uh, throw the hat into the ring. And you've got some other sort of up and comers like StatsCore and StatsBomb, who might want to make a splash by securing what is, as we've um, made out very clearly here, you know, a very high profile. Um, European League. Um, just sort of following on from that, um, whoever gets these rights, one of the requ- interestingly in the contract, one of the requi- requirements for this is to compare the league's market share against that of other European leagues. I'd be quite interested to see how do you expect Serie A's commercial performance to be over next season after obviously what was quite an engaging one last year. Um, George, if you can just um, kickstart that for us. Yeah, sure. Look, I, I think it's going to go from strength to strength just based on a lot of the stuff that we've already talked about, you know, the competitiveness of the league, kind of the the, the more level playing field than perhaps, um, you know, the big six of the Premier League or kind of the top two in, in La Liga and, the, and you know, I was going to say Bayern Munich in, in the Bundesliga, but <laughs> probably not after this weekend's result uh, in the Super Cup for them. Um <laughs> But yeah, you know, that it isn't it doesn't feel like a league at the moment that's dominated in the way that it has been in the past by one party. And I think one one thing that we usually see is that when a league has that kind of unpredictability, people will flock to to engage with it and want to follow it. And that can only lead to kind of commercial commercial upside ultimately. I think there is a kind of a bigger picture. And I'm gonna go a little bit off topic here. So Ramey, and if if I if I go kind of too wide of the mark on this, but there is a bigger picture here where we're seeing rights holders trying to kind of uh, almost kind of grow their investment numbers, but by giving away more. So if we look at you know the recent EFL deal with Sky, more matches than ever are going to be are going to be visible. 
if we look at the uh, Premier League next round of their broadcast um, their broadcast rights, and I appreciate we're not talking about broadcast rights here, but it, it kind of paints a broader picture. You know, again, they're going out with more packages than they have done in the past with more games available. Um, and yes, they'll they'll secure more revenue, but what's the yield per match on that? And I think it's I think that kind of translates over into into this as well. Kind of, there's a bit, a bit more of a breakdown of the packages that are being asked for. That you know, but why is that the case? Is it? I don't think it's necessarily that the packages are going to yield the amount that they probably did previously, but maybe the top figure is stronger than it has than than it currently is. And I think that's a challenge that's facing sport the world over at the moment, um, predominantly. You know that kind of need to continue to grow the revenues within sport, but perhaps needing to give away more to achieve that growth and maybe giving away disproportionately more to achieve that growth um, so that the, you know, the individual yield on assets that have been sold maybe aren't as big as they previously were. But look, in terms of commercial performance of the league, I think it'll be strong. I think it'll continue to grow. Um, and yeah, you know they need to try and capitalise on that as best they can while the league is as in, engaging as it is. And again, in UEFA's eyes, is ranked as the second best performing league in in Europe. Really interesting response, George. I'm, I'm gonna. I think it was Package A that was of of these rights that was audio visual. Um, mm. How important do you, do you think that's important? Like having the the actual games, being able to show the games online, or do you think people are just gonna watch the games or bet on the games if if they want to? Like the, how much are they actually gonna? Watch the Atlanta game or Bet three six five if they've if they've got it on their accumulator. Yeah, I think well, I think some people will. You know, I think we're continuing to see. I know that it's not quite. We're seeing more and more that kind of convergence of broadcast rights and and betting and and music and all, all these things kind of coming together. Um, obviously, this isn't quite that. These are these are betting audiovisual rights, but um, that sit within a specifically sit within a betting platform. Um, but yeah, I think people will tune in and, 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 and watch a fixture if they've got a bit on the game. Absolutely. I mean, it's there for a reason, right? People, people want to be able to see the games and maybe they don't have a subscription to, to whatever channel they're going to be shown on domestically in whatever country they're watching. But if they can watch it through their betting provider, then yeah, I think it's, um, I think it does have value. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm in the, I'm in the same boat with that really. I think that package A is the creme de la creme for, for yeah. these, you know, potential right rights holders, that's the one. The audio visual, if you can nab that, that's that's really the gold mine. And in terms of how Serie A will do against other, um, against other, I can't, I can't remember if you said European leagues or against other leagues, because, well, right now we're we're dealing with a whole diff, a whole different football landscape. It's incredibly strange, right? I, just today we were discussing if there's ever a world where you tune into the Saudi league because it, it has to be mentioned. Neymar looks like he's going to Saudi Arabia. Um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I think what Serie A will have is it has that competitiveness. It has that uh, name value in terms of clubs. Like you, you care as a football fan, you care if Juventus finish outside the top four or Roma yeah. can win the Serie A. Like it, it, it's ingrained in football culture. It's important. As opposed to, you know, Al Hilal, if Al Hilal win the Saudi Cup, it doesn't move the dial for me. I'm I'm not fussed by it. It's there's no heritage there. And whereas with Serie A, yeah, even with, you know, they, they might the league might be lacking a little bit of star power this year in the absence of Ronaldo and Zlatan. Obviously, Ronaldo departed quite a few years ago, but there's not quite that star power. But the the namesake of the clubs, the clubs potentially winning cups and having those moments that we saw Napoli have last year. And even Inter have with the Champions League final, I, I think that carries a lot more weight than, you know, uh, Neymar winning, uh, scoring a hat trick against a team in the Saudi league or, or something like that. Yeah, or Messi winning the league's cup in a few weeks, you know, potentially this weekend. Exactly. You know, again, you know, another another part of the world now that's starting to really um, kick on with major headlines around the globe for football. Um yeah, completely agree with your point, Joe. I think I think you're absolutely right. People will be tuning into Serie A for very different reasons than they'll be watching kind of a highlight reel of an Inter Miami game or a highlight reel of you know a Sadio Mane goal or whatever else it might be. They're, they're two different things. Uh, I'm really glad that you've mentioned uh, broadcasting deals here, guys. Um, obviously, quite extensively. 
these deals are often looked at as being kind of the ultimate driver of a league's reach and international growth. But how significant would you say betting and media data rights are? And are they, only some, are they sometimes overlooked as a, as a real sort of champion for domestic football? Um, Joe, for, uh, taking the insider sport perspective, you're our broadcast man here. Uh, what's your perspective on this? Uh, to me, you can't be a broadcast deal. Like you, you simply cannot be. I remember when, um, and I don't have the, the stats to back this up, so maybe I shouldn't say it, but I've got, I just don't think, uh, I'm going to use La Liga as an example. When La Liga was on Sky Sports, what a product. It was so well followed in the UK. It felt traditional to uh, watch La Liga after the Premier League on a Sunday. Yeah, it really agreed. felt like it was part of the, yeah, part of the culture. Whereas then it moved to, um, I think it moved via to Eleven now. Sports eventually. Via yeah. play pre- now, pre- Premier Sport now via play. And you've got to go some to want to spend. I'm pretty hardcore, but you've got to go some to spend eight pound extra a month or whatever it is on top of your subscriptions just for your La Liga games. Is it last night, for example, uh, the Barcelona game was on ITV Four, and that's a, a really good deal. I love that deal between uh, La Liga and ITV. Yeah. And I tuned in. I tuned in because otherwise, what am I going to watch on a Sunday night? There's nothing on. And enjoyed. I was rewarded with a nil-nil draw. But if if La Liga is on the, those channels on a Sunday night, you you watch it. Same for BT with Serie A. So I think whilst um, the betting rights deal is hugely valuable, I think betting and even talking in a perspective of betting numbers, if I if you see the game on the TV, if it's on your BT Sport or your Sky Sports, uh, then you're just more likely to watch it. I think. The Women's World Cup is another fabulous example. Obviously, slightly weird kickoff times, but because it's on those one, two, three channels, BBC and ITV, the engagement is just so much higher. Yeah, I completely agree with you on this. I always think about this as kind of like, you know, your, your broadcast deal is like it's for, it's for you know, your, your, your hardcore sports fan, but also your casual sports fan who just want, is flicking through the channels. There's a bit like what Joe said then, there's nothing on the telly, so I'm going to, I'm actually, I'm going to watch this this football match and then i think the the kind of the betting rights are more specific to you know you're a punter you know and and in many ways it can be a good thing like if you can access i'm a, I'm a huge football fan i like watching south american football if i can access the brazilian league or the argentine league through um a betting operator who got them rights and are, and are streaming the matches through their platform then you know i'll probably tune into some games throughout the year however you know that isn't uh, that's because I love football and go out of my way to try and watch football. That isn't going to be for everybody. And that's where the broadcast deals will always be king on this front, without a doubt. And it, it really goes both ways as well. Like, you know, because I used that example yesterday uh, of Barcelona, Getafe being on at 8.30 on a Sunday night on ITV. Because it's on ITV, I think um, the betting numbers will be higher because a casual audience is more engaged. They've, you know, they've, had a few bets this weekend and then you, you've won or lost and, you know, a final little play at the weekend, you go on the Barcelona game because it's on TV. If it's behind, no disrespect to a via play, but it's, if it's on a lesser known platform, an OTT subscription like that, it's less likely to be, uh, the betting engagement is likely to be lower, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. And I don't necessarily think it's it's detri- what you're saying is is against the platform itself. I think it's just one of those things where most people, especially in the economic times we're in, will question whether they're going to be willing to spend another, you know, I think it's about 12, 15 quid a month for uh, another set of sports channels just just because they want to watch. Maybe it's the, you know, Super League Rugby or whatever. It's not Super League, it's Championship Rugby League at Umber Play or La Liga. You know, it's, it's it's a lot of extra money to be asking for on top of Sky Sports, on top of BT Sport. Guys, this has been a fantastic conversation, but um, I think that's everything we've got for today's podcast. Um, Thank you very much, George and Joe, for joining us today and talking about this. For the listeners out there, we'll be leaving links in the description below for all everything related to today's topic from across SBC Media's roster of news sites. Again, George and Joe, thank you very much. And to our listeners, thank you and goodbye. 
Thank you for listening to today's episode of iGaming Daily, brought to you in conjunction with SBC Summit Barcelona, being held at the FIRA Barcelona Monduic on the 19th to the 21st of September. If you want to find out more about some of the subjects raised today, feel free to explore any of the sites in the SBC News Network or check out the latest edition of the SBC Leaders magazine. Happy reading.